Now, I don't know who you have at number one. If we're the same person, it's Jalen Smith. This dude's unbelievable. Notre Dame linebacker. He's junior this year. Tackles very well in space. Um, number two for me is Miles Jack. Doesn't matter that he's coming off an ACL surgery or ACL injury. Um, the dude's the best cover linebacker in the country. Uh, he plays well, and he's very physical at the point of attack, too, for his size, which a whole lot of people necessarily wouldn't expect. Number three, Montel, I, I struggled with this one. I, I really did. Oh, Reggie, boy. Reggie Ragland. And this is Whew. this is my popular commodity. So I, I didn't sell my soul to the devil by any means. But I'm telling you, you know, if you go back to my mock draft – which we're not going to talk about this week, but please feel free to go check uh, both out mine and Montel's at NGSCSports.com. I had Sean mm-hmm. Robinson going top three. Do I believe it's going to happen in my soul? Hell no. I don't. Like, there's, there's so many things that have to happen in order for Sean to be a top five talent. Wow. Or even top well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, get into the, we'll get into the mocks because, you know, you're, yeah. you're not getting out that easy. I'm going to hammer you for that pick. But let's, yeah. Let, let, let's keep it to linebackers for now. Um, yeah. By the so way, anyway, I, love, I love Jalen at yeah. one. Yeah, so anyway, you know, it's I, I think that that's what's going to end up happening. I think scouts like this player a lot more than player people like you and myself do for that. I don't know why, because I don't see a whole lot with this kid, and I don't know why people are really liking him. Is he a great linebacker? Sure, he's, he's okay at the point of the attack. He's not very good in coverage. He's very stiff at the hips. He's not very versatile in terms of a blitzer. He doesn't have any sort of moves to go with him. So I struggled with this one, but I put Raglan at three just because as a projection, I believe that he's probably going to be the third linebacker taken in this draft. Uh, number four is Leonard Floyd. Again, this is a guy who he's a true tweener. Um, he, for me, is an outside linebacker. He's a 3-4 outside linebacker. Uh, he definitely needs to add some weight. Uh, he kind of falls into the Vic Beasley category of last year, um, but he's an immense talent. The dude can pass rush really well. He's tall. He has long reach, um, and he's actually starting to develop some sort of moves with his hands, and he actually understands how to use his hands. But another thing with him is that he's really versatile, too, um, with the way that they use him in that scheme. He'll be in the dirt. He'll be two-point uh, on the edge, but he'll even be mic'd up sometimes uh, in the middle of a defense. Number five is a guy that, not a whole lot of people like as a linebacker, but Montel, I really love this kid as a linebacker. Sua Cravens from USC, and here's why. People dog him for his point of attack. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're a 3-4 outside linebacker and you're playing Will, you're going to be playing off the line of scrimmage. So you're not going to have to really – you're not going to be asked to set the edge too often. You're going to be playing a lot more in space. Uh, and I don't think I have to tell anybody uh, that he plays well in space – um, he was a two-time All-American as a safety um, at USC as a freshman and a sophomore. Um, so he has immense coverage ability. Number one, the thing that I like about him the most is he's extremely physical. Uh, the dude has great size, and he brings the load when he comes to hit you. Uh, so those are my top five. Two names to keep an eye on. I'm not going to go in-depth with them because, Montel, I want to get to you. Um, but it's a guy that's starting to come on to me late, Jalen reeves Maven from Tennessee. This dude is hashtag good. G-O-O-D. Number two, a guy that I'm not a big fan of, but just due to what I've watched of him at the FCS level, but his FCS or FBS tape when he was at uh, Ohio State was mm-hmm. amazing, and that's no offense. Um, yeah. I have to find a question as to why he played Average. So did we do a did we do a five A five B thing just now or did you it nope. was four Cravens no, four yeah. Cravens five is, okay just just nope. make it five, sure. five was Cravens okay. yep no yeah five was Cravens and then uh, Jalen Reeves Maven and Noah Spence are just two guys that anybody a part of Draft Nation needs to keep their minds on and their eyes out for um, for teams even their favorite team that may be looking for a you know either a four three defensive end or a three four inside outside linebacker. Uh, with Reeves, Maven, and Noah Spence. Um, but, Montel, I'm ready for you to kill me now with not only the Raglan one, but now I'm ready to hear yours 
so I can get my gloves in a little bit. Of course, of course, and you know I I hear you, and it's uh it's it's a good list. First off, know that it's a good list, and it's it could be definitely better, I guess. Um, only by one person, and I'll get to that in a second. But anyways, first off, me and you, we see eye to eye. I I really got Jalen Smith at number one. I don't really think he can get much better than this guy because he's talented. He can play, to me, any linebacker position, whether you want to go with Will, whether you want him inside. He breaks down and tackles in space extremely well. He's also uh, physical. He can shed blocks. He can move. He's intelligent. He knows where the ball's going and how to get there quickly. And he closes extremely well. So Jalen Smith is one, and I like his versatility, 3-4, 4-3. Three, four, four, three. I, don't, I don't really think it matters. Uh, number two, this is where we differ. My number two rated linebacker, saying we can use outside guys too, is – wait, hold on. Let me just double check, make sure I get his name right. Jordan Jenkins, right? Yep, um, yeah, Jordan Jenkins that's, from Georgia. That's, yeah, absolutely. I like him. I, I don't like his evil twin, Leonard Floyd. I, I like – I like Jordan Jenkins for two reasons. A, he's truly, when people say edge guys, and like over the last six months I've kind of like chilled with that term unless I'm talking casually, but I decided that I like, I decided that I like uh, Jordan Jenkins because he is actually like a real edge rusher. Like so, so many times people use it just to say it, but what it's supposed to mean, and it's a loose term, what it's supposed to mean is that you can play defensive end or linebacker. And a lot of these guys that people use you know, when they say edges are guys that are kind of just linebackers and not even great pursuit guys, but they're kind of quick sack guys, you know. So, um, you know, that's what's weird to me. But I say that to say this, Jordan Jenkins can do both. He can put his hand in the grass and play real defensive end, like real defensive end, not, hey, coach, I'm setting the edge every, you know, 10 plays. But he has functional strength that's special. I think if you watch the Vanderbilt game, it shows exactly what he's good at. He's quick in space. He hits like nobody's business. He has awesome functional strength for a guy rushing from the edge. He gives you uh, physically what Bud Dupree can, except he's more productive and he's more um, he's uh, he's more productive. And and I think to an extent he might uh, you know do better against the pass and in coverage because some of his tape had those things too. So that's my number two rated uh, linebacker. Uh, number three, uh, I, I'll put Miles Jack here. Um, only because he's coming off the, you know, that the the knee surgery, so it's kind of like, you know, can he do it? Can he not do it? Um, but I think he'll be fine. I really hope he can get healthy and do a combine. I'd like to get some official numbers for him. Um, his tape is pretty good. He's another guy that I think you can use in the three four or four three, uh, inside in a three four, and then four three maybe your will will position. Um, but actually, I to make him a mic in the three four, depending on how quick he is. Um, yeah, he, he's he's a special prospect. I see draft uh, central draft nation kind of chiming in on the conversation, Josh, and they're saying the same thing. Jack is an elite prospect. I, I want to see the combine numbers before I say elite, but I'll say special for now, and I'll say his tape could be a little better though but he gives you a lot of what you want out of a linebacker and it's a rarity in this year's class uh, moving to number four um this is this is where it gets difficult because you got some guys i don't like some guys that kind of do four is kentrell brothers I, I put him in number four because he gives you a lot of the things that reggie raglan can give you because people go oh reggie raglan reggie raglan well to me brothers is a better athlete um so he yep. can give you raglan power he can give you a sideline to sideline speed that people praise Rattler for, but I think he's as good, maybe better. And I also think his ball skills. The guys come away with a good number of interceptions. He's a ball hawk in the middle of the field, and he hits like no one's business. So to me, I think you've got a more athletic Reggie Ragland. That's my number four linebacker. And then my number five will probably be – my number five will be – uh, Reggie Ragland. Why, why not? I, I'll put him here for now. I'm not saying he's a first round pick yet. I just I don't feel comfortable doing it yet. Not without combine numbers. Um, I've kind of he's made me kind of reevaluate linebackers now. So once I saw his tape, I'm looking through everyone's all over again, and it's becoming annoying. <laughs> but um, <laughs> as it stands right now, Ragland is my number five guy, and I, I think he's gonna be fine. I, like I said before, he gives you some sideline to sideline speed. He can hit. Uh, I want to see him do more against the pass. And the tape I've seen, he hasn't done a lot of coverage things. And the truth is, if he's drafted in the first round, he's going to be expected to do coverage things. So we'll see where it goes. But I have no problem keeping Radley 5. A couple small notes. 
keep an keep hey, an eye getting, out for those Ohio State you, linebackers. You're getting, ripped, you're getting ripped over here, brother. They are hating on nobody Ragnar. likes Ragnar. Oh, oh really? People oh, are they hating not, that I put him at five, or do they think he just doesn't belong at all? Uh, he doesn't belong. So <laughs> they're probably ripping on both of us because uh, I had him three. So I'm not going to let you take all that by yourself. Um, but I completely agree. Uh, but continue. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked. I, like I said before, I'm putting him there right now, and then, you know, in another week when I really get through my evaluations, I will. But just like I said, I'm reevaluating everyone, Josh, so <laughs> I have to stick to what I know. Um, and keep an eye out briefly for those Ohio State linebackers. I love Darren Lee. His production isn't where I thought it would be. It was better last year. It could be better next year. I really hope he stays the year, but he's he's a great athlete for the position. Then look at Josh Perry, who's kind of, I yeah. mean, you want to talk about evil twins. You've got lightning and thunder yeah. here. Perry is stiffer, but he's powerful. His straight line speed is going to be 4 6 ish. He's really quick in a straight line, and his production is phenomenal for an for inside guy. But when I watch his tape, I'm not really thrilled at what he does unless he's going downhill. So I, I'm going to watch everyone's tape again and see how I feel, Josh. But well, those guys are important big time hey i like our i like our list though i like our list uh, we actually are kind of bouncing back and forth a little bit so it's going to be fun here in the next probably two or three weeks when we start really breaking them down from outside to inside um i do want to say one quick thing before we throw it over to our break our halfway break of the show and montel you can vault me on this jalen reeves maben from tennessee has great tape and Mont- well w- when you get a chance to see it it's going to be better than Raglan's he's way more athletic and he flies around the field has way better range if he tests well at the combine he's going to be a late first round pick and I believe that wholeheartedly I would believe that somebody's going to take him over Raglan if Raglan falls into the late teens area, you know, 16 through that 32. So basically the back half of the first round. I wouldn't be surprised if Ree Maven gets taken over the top just because he's so much more athletic. So please feel free to vault me on that. Please be nice on Twitter with me, though, because I know I'm going to probably get killed for that one. <laughs> um, no, no but, problem. hey, I mean, no problem. it's the truth. I'm telling you. Uh, it's going to be that type of player. It's just – his tape is enamoring, man. It's really good. Um, but anyway, great list. Please keep in contact with both mine and Montel's Twitter accounts and the Draft Central Twitter account here in the coming weeks when we start releasing our top five position players. I know just basing it off of the list in the top fives that we've done so far on the show, it is going to be one hell of a draft season for us. But with that, Montel, I'm going to go ahead and toss it to you for a quick NGSC Sports update. When we come back, we are going to talk some FCS football, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you guys have uh, your notebooks and paper ready because we're going to be talking about the semifinals. And we're also going to have the first annual Star Wars mock draft. And we're going to basically talk about if we had to start a franchise with one player, who would it be? So make sure you stay tuned to that. Montel, Mm -hmm. take it away, brother. Thanks, Josh. This is an NGSC news break. Uh, Once again, you can listen to all the shows live at NGSCSports.com. Click on the Draft Central tab, and under the tab should be the shows on the NGSC Draft Central homepage. In the news now, Duke Blue Devils All-American safety, Jeremy Cash will miss the New Era pinstripe bowl against Indiana after undergoing surgery on his right wrist Wednesday, according to CBS Sports. Cash was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year and earned unanimous first-team All-America honors after he collected 101 tackles, 18 tackles for loss, three forced fumbles, and two and a half sacks, playing with the same wrist injury all season. A timetable for Cash's recovery is not immediately known, leaving his status for the Senior Bowl and the NFL Combine up in the air. In other news, according to ESPN, Michigan State quarterback Connor Cook expects to be fully healthy when he lines up against Alabama at the Goodyear Cotton Bowl. Cook injured his throwing shoulder when he was driven to the turf in a win over Maryland on November 14th, and has been hampered by it since then. Cook threw for 24 touchdowns and five interceptions this year. 
Be sure to go on to NGSCSports.com and check out some of our other stories. We have some incredible ones up for you today. One is Pro Football in Los Angeles. This is written by NG.